In this video, we're going to start exploring some of the unique workflow techniques that you have inside of Flame. And when I say unique, obviously I mean different, and different isn't a bad thing. In fact, once you learn how to take advantage of Flame's gestural workflow, you can become so much more efficient in the application than if you didn't take advantage of these workflows. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is what I like to refer to as swiping or the swipe workflow. If you look along the edge on the left or on the right side of your viewing area and also the full height of our media panel because we have it set to be full height, you'll notice that there's an edge, there's a bar almost. Well, what that allows you to do is easily switch between two different view layouts. One of them is always the player, but the other one is whatever view configuration or view layout you had before you did the swipe. So for example, watch what happens. I swipe to the right, my viewing panel changes to be my reels because that's the last view layout I had selected. So to emphasize that, let me switch this to be freeform, okay? Now I'm gonna swipe and tap to the left. I go back to the player. I swipe and tap to the left again. I go back to the freeform layout. So either tapping left or right, you will toggle between looking at the one player and whatever your last layout was. And also later when we get into certain tools and get into the batch environment, when you swipe down, you'll be able to access different parts of the UI depending upon what tool it is. Like in the action compositing environment, you can access the priority editor very quickly by swiping down. You can access the animation curve editor in certain tools by swiping. And when we look at those tools, we'll re-explore the swiping workflow relevant to those individual tools. Another swiping option is when you add a modifier key. Now, the media panel, we've talked a lot about the media panel, and we also did mention that we have a flyout down below that we can do full height, which it currently is set at. If, if I disable the full height, you'll now see that the editing panel now has expanded to the full width of my UI. I can switch that back to be full height again. And also from this flyout, you can choose hide. Now there's hotkeys for these options also. But what I like to do is hold the control key down and then tap to the left of the UI and I hide my media panel. If I want to bring my media panel back, I hold the control key and I tap on the left side again. If I want to move my media panel or display it over on this side, the right side of my UI, I hold the control key again and I tap. Now I just move my media panel to the right hand side. Hold control again and tap. I can hide it. Just bring it back on my left hand side. I'll hold the control and I click again and there it is. It's back on the left hand side. This is also true for our editing panel. If I hold the control key and I tap down, I hide the detail panel. If I hold the control key again and tap down, I bring it back. Now, if you wanted to, if I hold control and I tap down and then hold control and tap on the left, I hide everything except for my viewer. But there's a much easier way of doing that. So let me hold control, tap here, I'll tap down. Over on the right-hand side of the player, of any player, in fact, you'll see this little double edge arrow, if you will. If I click that, I go into full screen mode. And if I bring my cursor away from the bottom of the UI, you'll see that even the playback controls disappear. I'm not tapping, I'm just bringing my cursor down into this area, and you'll see the playback controls all come back. To step out of full view mode, I can click that little button again, or if I go back into it, I can hit the escape key, and that's going to take me out of full view mode. I should also mention that I am using a Wacom tablet, which allows me to use the gestural workflow very easily. A little clumsier with a mouse, but it does work if you're using a mouse. Although I don't know many Flame artists that use the mouse inside of Flame, but maybe you do. Nothing wrong with it. Now, if the swiping workflow is something that you really don't like and you don't want to use, you can turn it off. You would do that inside of the preferences for Flame. We haven't discussed any of the preferences, so let's go down to where it reads Flame, click on this to bring a flyout up, and you're going to see the preferences. And then when you go to preferences, you're going to receive another flyout with all the different categories or parts of the preferences. I'll choose User Interface. It's going to bring up our preferences. 
And the first one on the right hand side is the gestural workflow and you see it reads swipe bars. If you disable that, now the swiping method that I just showed you is not going to be there. But I'm going to recommend that you leave this on and try to use it and get comfortable with it because, as I said earlier, it really does make you more efficient in the software, being able to access different parts of the software and different elements of the software so much faster than having to click buttons and expose this and choose this from a menu and so on. As you can see, there are a lot of preferences inside of Flame. Um, we're not going to cover all these. I just want to touch on a couple that are relevant to what we've already learned or already talked about. One is the reels. Down below, you can control the default number of reels that will be created when you create a new reel group or a new batch group and so on. We'll just leave these at the default for right now. But I just wanted to point this option or this preference out to you. You can also change the direction of the reels if you wanted to. The default is horizontal, but you can tick click this button and it would switch it to be vertical. But again, I'll leave it at horizontal. The other preference I'll talk about very quickly is the tool tips. I'm sure you've noticed it as my cursor was moving around the UI. Every now and then a tool tip will pop up explaining what that tool tip is. And that's great, especially for a new user who's trying to learn the software. This is a, an added advantage of being able to understand what buttons are and what they do. But for my videos, for these videos, I'm going to disable this just so it's not distracting as I'm trying to show you something and a tool tip will pop up and be hanging out there for a little bit. So I'll just turn that off for right now. We're going to come back and look at some of these other preferences that are relevant to what we are discussing at that time. For right now, I'm just going to choose close and I'm back to my Flame UI. Now, the next thing I want to talk about as far as something being a unique workflow or a different workflow than what you expect, this is if you are using Flame on a Mac as I am. And what that is, is your typical undo hotkeys and redo hotkeys of Command Z and Shift Command Z are not the hotkeys in Flame for both Linux and the Mac version. This has to do with the fact that Flame came from the Linux OS to start with. So if you're using Flame on a Linux OS, hitting Control Z or Control R is not abnormal. So I thought that was something important to mention to the Mac users learning Flame. So for example, if I select this clip right here and I drag it to the bottom of the UI and I delete it, it's removed. I want to undo it, right? Well, if I hit Command Z, nothing's going to happen because that's not the hotkey for undo. It is Control Z. So by hitting Control Z, you can see I've undone my deletion of that clip. And then Control R is the redo. So if I hit Control R, you can see I once again have deleted that clip because I redid that action. You also have some buttons you can click on to access the things that you've been doing and undo. And you can create an undo to a specific time, such as timeline drag and drop and the clip is back into my sequence. Now, if you are a Mac user and it drives you crazy that Control Z and Control R are the undo and redo, you can change these to be what you normally have. To do that, we wanna to go to the keyboard shortcut dialog box. So I click where it reads Flame once again, and I come up to where it reads Keyboard Shortcuts. I click on that, and the Keyboard Shortcut dialog box opens. You can also use the Keyboard Shortcut of Control Option F8 to get to this dialog box. You can see and tell there are a lot of shortcuts and hotkeys available inside of Flame. But what's great is you can customize these, save these, and build your own. Even if there is an action or a description that doesn't have a hotkey, you can add one. But what I want to do is click in this field right here, and I'll type undo. Then I'll click search, and you can see it jumps right to undo, and it reads control Z. If I want to change this, I need to click on it inside of this dialog box over here in the list, and you'll see that it is now populated over here in the keystroke and the description. And now on my actual Mac keyboard, I will hit Command Z. And now in the keystroke field, where it read Control Z, it now reads Command Z. Now I'll click the Set button, which then I get a confirmation dialog box. I click Confirm, and then I choose Save All. And I'll receive one more confirmation dialog box, and I will confirm that, yes, I want to save all of these. 
So what I just did is I overrode the default hotkey for undo to my user profile. And you can see over here now in the list, it reads command Z is the undo. And there's now a Y under the user indicating that it is a custom hotkey. If I close this now and I take this clip once again and I drag it to the bottom to the UI to drag and drop, delete it. And then I hit command Z, I undo. So you can set the undo to be command Z if you really want to. I'm going to go back to our keyboard shortcuts once again to show you another thing. Type undo. You see it says command Z still. I'm going to choose reset all. It's going to ask me, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I do. Now if I search for undo once again, it is control Z. Back to its default. The other hotkey that confuses people right off the bat is the delete key. Let me type delete and choose search. You'll notice, oh, now here we have the word delete is in multiple hotkeys. So I can use this arrow now, the up and down arrow to navigate between the different hotkeys that have the word delete in their description. But there we are, we're looking at delete and there is no hotkey. So oddly enough, the delete key on the keyboard inside of Flame does not delete anything. So let me close this to give you an example. Selecting something right here and I hit the delete key, I can hit either delete key that's on my Mac keyboard, nothing happens. So if you want to set that to be the delete key, you can go back to your shortcut, your keyboard shortcuts, type delete once again, search, click our arrow down one, click on the field, then hit the delete key, then choose set, confirm, save all, confirm, and close. Now if I select this clip, I hit the delete key, it is going to delete it as you would have expected. I will hit control Z to undo that. I'll leave the delete key set as the, as the, the hotkey for delete. Although you will notice as in, in these videos, I seldom over hit the delete key. Once you are so used to that drag and drop method of removing and deleting things, you just do it all the time. So those are just some of the main differences with inside the workflow of Flame that I, I find new users stumble on a little bit. So I wanted to spend a little time on that. And as I said, we'll come to some of the other options, the workflows that are unique to Flame as we're building our comp, and I will explain them then. But that's it for this video. The next video, we're going to start talking about batch and batch reels and the node-based compositing environment.